So this is a, a this cat, a Bengal, absolutely magnificent, has got a, a damaged canine tooth. We're going to x-ray and see how it, if it's exposed into the pulp cavity or not. And we'll decide whether the, the only treatment if it's in the pulp cavity is to do a root canal or extraction. This is probably too late for a pulpotomy, which is uh, closing, closing the root ca ca canal because it happened a long time ago. And inf ascending infections probably already happened. But while we're getting ready for the dental, we're setting up our dental anesthetic machine. He has the dental equipment, that the dental instruments set up to use. <coughs> we say, we say, we're just getting ready. The cat's been pre-med and sedated and is about to be an equipment. So the pulpotomy, Phil, what's the sort of time frame that you can do those in? Generally, we like to get them within 72 hours. So we'd like to get them as soon as the... Um, as soon as the tooth is broken, and usually there's bleeding when there's blood in the tooth. So we actually get a fair number of them, but you've got to know that we... we so speed we, is important. And, and every, every cat deserves a pain-free, infection-free mouth. So we don't want... They can't talk to us. So we don't want, and they don't show their signs as easily. So I want to make sure when the cat goes home, it doesn't have residual issues that it can't tell the owner. Okay. What are you doing now? I'm just feeling, I'm just feeling, yes, this is going to the pulp cavity. Can I see anything in the pulp cavity? But we will we'll take an x ray now to confirm. I have a camera too. <laughs> x ray cam um, camera, portable x ray generator for our de digital dental x rays. You ready? Yes, we're ready. Right. Phil's not gowned up, so you need to move. Mm -hmm. right. Yeah, Phil goes. X-ray. Sexy X-ray. We've got a beautiful X-ray straight away. And we can see that it's in the pulp cavity because that's where the pulp cavity is, or it's very close. So, so this, is, this is an X-ray that I'd like you to look at. You can see, I'll show the mouth. You can see the teeth. This is the canine tooth in question. Pulse. This is the pulp cavity and you can see the pulp cavity is going essentially to the end here. So I'll try and decide but it looks like it's actually exposed. We most likely will take out this tooth. But just that you can see um, most of the time the pulp ends a few sets, a few millimeters before the end. X-ray, I can see where the pulp cavity hole is. I've taken a little needle and just gently put it into the where the, where the pulp is and you can see the needle goes right in. So we know there's deep pulp exposure. Awesome. So unfortunately, we cannot she save this tooth. So the process for extracting a tooth, though, what do you do? So canine teeth in cats are very big. The root is double what sticks out. So there's about a one centimeter tooth sticking out. So the root's going to be one and a half centimeters, so at least even bigger. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to lift a gum flap. I'm going to I'm going to take I'm going to lift the gum up here, bear away some of the bone that holds the tooth. Mm -hmm. So Gently take the tooth out, out and then close it, stitch it close, and you'll see the it. And you'll see it. Um, we'll show you the post op what it looks. What it looks. Well, like. There's the flap that we started. You can actually see the flaps just starting. So we make we so we're, we're making a flap, so and there's the flaps just start, I'm starting to make a gum flap. Okay. And then we'll do and that's what you use to stitch up. Yeah. I'm gonna, when I've taken out the tooth, mm -hmm. I'll be closing. So you also got a screwdriver. So you can basically see we've um, we've cut a flap around, we've burned away bone. There's actually a probably a periapical, periapical abscess at the root, so the tooth is not coming out easily because there's probably a, an ankylosis or joining. So I've got to work very gradually, very slowly around the tooth because I don't want to break the tooth. It's starting to move. No, so the serotonin is actually the white tube. You can see how much loosening we've drilled, we've burnt, we've made a little flap here that we're going to close. We've now loosened the tooth. We just very gently loosening the tooth, going all around the tooth and just trying to loosen it so the tooth will come out. You can now, we're getting a little bit of movement. So it's now a little bit looser. 
what you'll see, what you'll see is that we don't extract teeth. We gently, when the time is right, we take the tooth out. So the tooth came out being pulled out. You can see that the tooth is out completely. You can see what the root, what the root is like. There's a bit of an abscess on the tip of the root. That's a periapical granuloma. The tooth is out completely, and I'm very happy with the extraction. It didn't break, but you can see how we actually had to burr away about half the tooth. So this cat will be a lot better off. You can see here's, well, there's a nice big uh, cavity. We'll clean it out. So the process of burring it out, that helped you loosen it? So we, if you try and pull the tooth, it breaks and fractures and you get roots left behind. So what I've had to do is remove all the bone gently around the tooth. It's taken me 15 to 20 minutes, and you can just see the set to elevators I've been using one at a time, gently burring around the tooth. The idea is as atraumatically as possible, finally just take the tooth out. Slowly remove it. So I'm very happy with the outcome. Post-op, you can kind of see, that's the pulp cavity. You can see the tooth had to come out. There's a syringe in the pulp cavity. And that's about what it was like in the mouth. Even the, the fact that cats can't actually speak, so the blood clot's actually good. You, I want you to see like a beautiful blood clot that's forming, and that will actually um, clot, and that's going to seal the that's going to seal the hole. But I'm going to stitch it closed. So, Katie, I need some five more. Five more cat Five more cat milk, please. So now we've we've taken the tooth out, we've cleaned the hole, we've smoothed the gum. I've now made we, we've now got a little flap. Here's the little flap. We're going to close. We're going to just close up the hole. So it'll look nice and neat and it'll also make the recovery a lot quicker, a lot less painful. What I'd like the viewers to note is we're already about a half an hour into the surgery. Remember would you say it's about a half an hour or 20 minutes? Now, yeah. So these things aren't that quick. We're using something called cat guts. So it's a, it's a pretty old suture material, five naught, very thin. But it gets absorbed after about four or five days. So for four or five days, we'll have this um, it will be out the mouth, and we don't need to take it out because it's a um, absorbable suture. And then when I'm finished, we'll do a, a quick scale and point the oral. You can see we've started closing the wound. You can see it's closing beautifully. We've made a flap. Uh, we've done a, a flap, and we've started closing the hole. And you can see how beautiful it's looking. And the flap itself, just to close it beautifully, takes a few minutes. Well. You can take a look at how we've left it. So we've, we've put we've put a few we put a few stitches closing the gum. The body will heal beautifully. And now we're going to scale and polish. You can see plaque and tartar on the teeth. This is a little instrument that's sharp on one side and blunt on the other. It's called a subgingival curette. You might have heard the word root planning or subgingival curettage. My dear, we're going to try and scrape out if we can. There's very little here, but just to demonstrate. So I'm going a little bit under the gum and scraping. There's very little to do in this particular case, but just to demonstrate the, what we would do on any case. So I've cleaned out a little bit above the gum in one particular spot. And now I'm going to take a polisher, just like you would get at your dentist. We're going to take some polish. And uh, I'm going to put, smells delicious, where I polish. It is a strong smell. Basically the same equipment as at a human dentist. It's, it's the same equipment. Incidentally, the machines we bought have bought it. Are, they are veterinary, veterinary purpose built. But in my previous clinic, we had a really good human machine. It did exactly the same. So we take this. So we're going to turn the cat over and do the other side. Now I'll take the swab out from the back of the throat. We're just going to clean, we're going to... Yeah. So we actually turn the patient to turn the, to the other side? We, we've, we've finished the procedure, we're going to now do a scale and polish um, on the other side as well. So Samuel, are you going to be turning it? Mm -hmm. Let's just, no, I'm going to hold that. Samuel, wait. Yeah. Okay.
You can see that this side's pretty bad. This is the side the cat actually chews on. So if I show you, Mel, take a look how bad the plaque and titer on this side is. We'll be cleaning that, clean, cleaning the plaque. Right, you can actually see, now we can actually see the roots. That's what it looks like. It's like, you can see on an x-ray how magnified it is, how nice it is. But we put a needle through the, through the tip there, it goes straight through. And an x-ray is diagnostic, so it's really nice to go to a vet who's got good dental x-ray, so you can see exactly what's being done, and how you, um, it's just made everything very nice and neat. We haven't done a post-op x-ray because we can see the tooth's completely out. And you can actually see, if you look at the x-ray here at the top, this is, the, the roots actually already, there's, there's already damage here, this has been a long time, and I think there's periapical, or the tip of the root, there's loss of density on the root of the tooth. So you can kind of see it here, it's not a nice smooth root, but that's a good outcome. And those are the incisors, the rest of the incisors in um, our beautiful Belgium. Okay, our beautiful. So, Sammy, what are you doing? I'm observing the cat and watching his recovery um, to make that it's all smooth and on that, like, yeah. So what, what's telling you now, what are you happy about with the cat? Oh, he, she's not like moving so quickly, jumping around, anxious. She's just lying down with her head down, all calm. So she's and, calm? Yeah. And, and if it, she wasn't, then you'd get yeah, the bed? Yeah, If she wasn't and she was freaking out and, you know, shaking and all that, then I would like to get the vet. And there's a psychotic crowd. <laughs> <laughs> You'll come to him later. <laughs> So right now I'm happy with her recovery because it's calm and smooth. Yeah. So, her surgery. Yeah, her surgery went really well. It was a really smooth um, procedure. Um, nothing too unusual. Um, <laughs> yeah, she was a beautiful patient to work on. And yeah, look at those eyes. <laughs> <laughs> she is stunning. How long have you had it? So um, five years. And Phil tells me you travelled like 50,000 kilometres to get here? Uh, not, not quite, um, <laughs> but we've been at 50,000 kilometres. We've travelled around Australia in a combi van. Yeah. And yeah, she's been to every state except the Northern Territory. Wow, so you travel with her a lot. Yeah, yeah. So What's that like? Uh, she's great. I mean, I got a, a, a bangle after my last cat. Um, uh, got old yeah. um, because I had heard that they were like dogs in cats bodies and I'm not a dog person so I thought well I want to travel with a cat and a Bengal's the way to do it and there's lots of them that do travel there's quite a few on Instagram with their with their Instagram uh, travel accounts and yeah she's great she knows that me and the van are home that's her territory and she maybe wanders around sort of 50 meters within my space so and little um, buddy may have mentioned to me that she might have done some punishment towards you this morning You're about coming to the vet? Yes, yeah, <laughs> which was a little bit of a surprise because she's normally very comfortable in the car. Um, she was she was sitting on my lap and she just voided um, without any kind of indication that she was going to. I had just turned the heater on and so I didn't know whether, you know when you get warm and cosy sometimes you feel like you need to go to the toilet and I didn't know whether it was more just a spontaneous it's reaction It's nice to, to see you heat. fully clothed. <laughs> so I've been home and changed and put a load of washing on. You didn't freak fill out at all. <laughs> I did the toga with the... <laughs> but uh, I looked like I'd wet myself. <laughs> but um, well, We're glad that's not the case. <laughs> but no, I brought an extra towel. <laughs> Might have been a touch mean. <laughs> No, she's all right. She's, I don't think she's ever wet on me before, so it was definitely a little bit unusual. Maybe just some nerves. It's like she knew what was coming. <laughs> yeah, but she's, um, she's generally pretty comfortable in the car, so I was a little bit surprised. But We're very happy with her recovery, and I think she'll be a lot more comfortable now. That's good. I mean, I know cats can um, hide their discomfort very effectively, so yeah. I was a little bit worried that, you know, I was making, forcing her to put up with discomfort unnecessarily. And, and um, so me any specific recommendations for prevention of this again? Just basically a good diet would like, yeah, help it definitely. Um, maybe clean the teeth with like a little wet swab thing, like a tissue. So dental cleaning wipes? Yeah, yeah, just washing it with the 
So can you get special wipes? wipes. Yeah, you can. We actually sell them. (laughs) Oh, some special wipes? Yeah, yeah, we do. Um, And then basically, yeah. What about some aquadent or something in the water? Oh, yeah, we do have um, also like chemical things that you can, not chemical things. Beautifully worded, Sammy. (laughs) She's totally a salesperson, can you tell? (laughs) I was a waitress, I didn't have to sell things. And but pretty much only drinks running water, so yeah. I don't know yeah. that's not all, for her. But not yeah. all cats like drinking, uh, yeah. like having their teeth done, so there is an option to put an enzyme yeah. in the water, which will help break down tartar. And that's um, what I, I have. I have that like, on a science diet, dental science diet. So yeah. that's actually a mechanical cleaner, so that works by gra- grinding the tartar off. It's the size of the dental yeah. bites, so this is a little bit easier and it's actual breaks down it's oh okay yeah. Stuff. yeah oh well we could try some of that so is that too i think we've got our mum and we're gonna hide and cling to her until we get out of here away from the crazy people with the camera yeah yeah definitely or the one that's obsessing with the eyes <laughs> i love her eyes yeah she's they're just so pretty they Thank changed you. color they were orange they were they were like brown when she was a kitten and that's, what my oh, cat really? green. Yeah. that's what my happened with my cat it was blue and then it turned green they glow blue in certain light yeah Thank you. You're welcome.